You guys, uh, have you ever thought of being Rastaman? Rastafarian? I'm not gonna tell you what I do outside of work, people, but I do respect the Rasta people. To make a queen is called Jabli. Jabli. A Rastaman in Kenya will always be wearing the Rasta colors. Mm -hmm. I don't know. And they will always have a Jamaican flag. Do we so have to always associate uh, the Rasta culture with Jamaica? Why do you always do that? What's up, good people? My name is Gossi Africa, the African Caribbean boyfriend. And I am here accompanied by my friends. The Flying Queen. The Flying Hi Queen. Guys. Yeah, t tell them who, who, who you are. Um, okay, I'm a YouTuber based in Kenya. Lifestyle, fitness, everything, random, all of it. Traveling, all of it. In Kenya and my name is the flying queen on YouTube or rather in every social media platform, platform. check her out yes yeah that's a true African mm -hmm. <laughs> brother Hello, Shabby from the black geo still on a branded tour I told you from Nairobi to Wall Street we still on season two still on season two and we just here in a legendary spot and what we don't want secret location people secret always location. say secret location <laughs> and we were sitting here talking and go see africa we had a feeling you see the trees yeah over here doesn't it feel like we're in the islands or something right here it's a beautiful place we kind of feel like we're in the islands right now these wow. are actually where wow. the, the kids in the neighborhood play football wow you don't know yeah this is our playground yes mm -hmm. so you see a lot of great kids you know so we're talking about the islands today you know, how's the islands very similar to the motherland, and specifically Jamaica, you know. And what are some yeah. things, you know, you know, I hope people out there from Jamaica watching us. We have amazing support uh, from yeah. the Caribbean. We love the Caribbean General. islands. Mm -hmm. You know, specific, uh, specifically, I am Bayesian also. I'm related to four tribes. So when you see my last name, it's actually my Bayesian family. Yes, I'm related to hundreds of Bayesians. I am uh, part of the history of Bayesian. So yeah, when I go to uh, Barbados, I can't actually get citizenship because of my great grandfather and my grandfather. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were, they were uh, got their freedom doing slavery in Barbados. So I told you I'm related to a lot of African history, including African presidents. So when it comes to Jamaica and these islands, I'm very close. Liberians read up our history, very close to the islands. We actually, they actually call us the islands um, because it's, you know, especially on the continent. When you, come to when you say very islands, similar. you mean the Caribbean islands? Caribbean islands, very similar. We are the, uh, pretty much the branch a lot to the continent, to the islands. Though. So okay. when it comes to Jamaica, I grew up with a lot of Jamaicans. Uh, shout out to my Jamaicans in New York City and on the continent, Montego Bay. We love you out there. We love you out there. Yeah. Please come to the, please come to Africa. This is your continent. Mm -hmm. This is your continent. Mm -hmm. right? you see this, right? It's a beautiful place. Yeah, yeah. And I'm happy these guys are getting to visit uh, this continent lately. We have a big population of uh, the Jamaicans, yeah, or other Caribbean of Caribbeans. Yeah, we have even adopted a, a hood under the name of oh, Jamaica, Jamaica somewhere around Nairobi. Yeah, um, anywhere you ever meet Rasta, Rasta men, mm -hmm. Rastafarians mm -hmm. within the city, yep. they always uh, link themselves to, um, to Jamaica. Jamaica. Mm. Yeah, and but Mali was from them. Jamaica, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they wow. love the music. Yeah. Kenyans love the Anytime music. Anytime Kenyans are out here fighting for freedom, they always yeah, talk about right Jamaica. Yeah, about Bob Marley. Mm -hmm. Bob Marley was to, used to agitate for freedom. Mm -hmm. Black man's freedom. Wow. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we still love the fine people always. Whenever someone mentions Jamaica, they think of the burning what? <laughs> Don't say oh, smoke, it. smoking. Yeah. Okay. But, uh, I learned that... Um, or rather, when people talk of Jamaica, we think of reggae music. Reggae That's music, but hey, we have the best reggae musicians in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. Reggae, raga, mm -hmm. yeah, dance or... Wow. Name three artists from Jamaica, maybe. <laughs> um, Chris Martin. Yeah. Um, Conscience. Yeah. Conscience has a name. Has a name. He's Otieno. <laughs> Ot yeah, it's yeah, a name Kenyan from name. Kenya. Yeah. yeah. Um, and Roman Vago. Uh, Roman Vago. Yes. Wow. Mm. Demarco still. Mm. Yeah. Demarco is. So Demarco uh, is dancehall, right? Yeah, but he's. Uh, I love Demarco because he was actually one of the first uh, reggae artists or dancehall artists to do a lot of content. Um, his music on the continent. Mm -hmm. uh, continent. I'm sorry, people. On the continent, with a lot of Afrobeat artists, especially from West Africa. So mm -hmm. yeah, if you heard Noah Hala, 
Yeah, that man was on the concert. Yeah, he knows about Afro beat. He been there way before these new age uh, um, artists mm -hmm. are doing music. Way before Chris Brown. Of the, yeah, it was DeMarco, actually. Wow. Yeah, so wow. shout out to DeMarco. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Unlike... DeMarco, I love it. Yeah, and unlike Africa whereby we have counties, before we used to have provinces. Mm -hmm. I learned that in Jamaica we have uh, uh, the parishes. The yeah, parish. Oh, so, yeah. Monti... Uh, yeah. Oh, the yeah. islands, majority of the islands is like parishes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my, a lot of my family in the islands, they live on parishes, actually. They call parishes? parishes yeah. Maybe. Can you guys name uh, around three parishes? Uh, Portland is a parish. Portland, I know it's another one. St. Catharines, I believe I've been to. It's, it's, it's something I know, of course, it slipped my mind. I only been to make a few times, but uh, I mean, just Google things, people. Google a lot of things. Um, that's all you got to do. Or you just want to visit. Tell people about the time. A lot of these places. Yeah. Jamaica is another place where you can't just visit one, two times to say you visit Jamaica. You got to mm -hmm. visit mm -hmm. multiple times. So, yeah. You know, in the future. Yeah, we may be, like, our slogan is, you never know where we might end up at. We may be in Jamaica, people. You yeah. never know. You never uh, know. I mean, we may return to Jamaica. Yeah. You know so keep, keep it locked. Keep it locked. Keep it, keep but it locked. We have an yeah. amazing following from Jamaica. And uh, I want you guys, uh, guys to leave a comment there. Comment uh, about the parish you live in. Mm -hmm. Let let us know more about Jamaica. Yeah. We love that country, and uh, I won't mind if I yeah. learn more about it. And also learn the the languages. The language? Mm -hmm. I think they use a. Uh, the, the, it's English. Yeah, it's yeah, English, but with a twist. Oh, the twist, well. everyone. <laughs> yeah, I want to ask you a question. Yeah. yeah I know it's, it's a name that's. It's a Jamaican name that's always used uh, heavily in this country, especially in Nairobi. Padmore. 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 I know y'all see that name oh, a lot. Oh, yeah. Padmore. Yeah. Padmore is. A, it, I saw a club by the name Padmore. You see a lot of things named after Padmore. Yeah. But it's specifically named after a person from Jamaica. He was actually born in Trinidad. Mm -hmm. But uh, yes. Patmore is a person? George Patmore. And we want to read his history, people. That's what we do here. You know, he's a great leader. He's a, George Patmore was an uh, important figure in pet, uh, the Pan Africanist group and anti colonial um, politics during the 12th, uh, 20th century. Born in Trinidad, he moved to London where he became a key, key organizer, uh, organizer of networks that brought together some of Africa's future leaders, including your president, Jomo Kenyatta. Mm -hmm. Yes, he mm -hmm. knew him. Uh, Padmore, he became um, a high uh, profile and communist activist. You know, he was against um, apartheid, trust, uh, rid of his history. Although he later broke uh, with the movement, he believed that it was downplaying the struggle of imperialism. See, he was, a, he was an individualist too. He didn't like to work with a lot of groups. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the thing about him. He was a leader. Imperialism. Yeah. Imperial, by imperialism, you mean uh, yeah. the era of kingship, right? Yeah, the, I mean, globalization, what's going on right now, you see, it's not a lot of democracy in the world. Don't think these countries are real democracy. You know, it's really ran by a few people, and that's what's going on uh, right now to the Americas, to, you know, even to Africa. So, uh, the things that he was fighting for are similar to what we're fighting for. I think it's even harder nowadays. You know, people mm -hmm. understand what's going on. We, we just look at uh, the videos back then where they were really beating us in the back and all that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. Systematically, we are worse than we were mm -hmm. back then. Because mm -hmm. back then, people at least had, like George Padmore went to places where it had African schools. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Talked mm -hmm. about African uh, lawyers. Yeah. You understand? They live in your neighborhood. African teachers. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, maybe in Africa, you still have your teachers who live in your neighborhood. But in these other countries, even Trinidad to America, to Europe, uh, those big black com communities, they don't live in the neighborhoods anymore. Wow, they move to wow. suburbs. We call them suburbs. Suburbs. Yeah. Suburbs so, is what in in Africa we call them. The uh, ghetto, oh, the I slum. Mean, like, no, Karen. No. Karen. The Karen. Suburbs are oh, suburb. Karen. Mm -hmm. Loving. Tourism. Oh, the rich neighborhoods. Runda, those are the rich neighborhoods. Imperialism. It, it, wow. It marginalizes uh, a lot of people. You know, uh, different people. So what's going on right now is subsequent, uh, subsequently, small percentage of people are actually uh, enjoying different countries. Mm -hmm. From here to Brazil to America. And that's what's going on right now. So you got to read up this history of those guys. Uh, we're still fighting the same fight. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's why those streets was named after, because Jomo Kenyatta was a big Pan-Africanist. Sure. He was at the head of the uh, AU. Yeah. So people like George Padmore, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Tubman from uh, Liberia. Liberia. You know, um, Patrice Lumumba, you know, Kwame Kroma. You know, these are all people who are connected. Uh, w, uh, with w. E. Du Bois, I believe, mm -hmm. who actually inspired Kwame Nkrumah. 
And uh, please also read up on Marcus Garvey, people. Come on now. Yeah, Marcus Garvey, he's Africans. a Jamaican, right? Yeah, but guess what? He, his famous quote I, love, I always loved from Marcus Garvey was, he said he would never give up a continent for a country. That means Africa. When they ask him about Africa, why, why does he support Africa so much? Because he was the first black person to actually build, it's called a Black Star Line ship, to build a ship from America to ship uh, free slaves or free Africans back to Africa. He was the first real person to do that. Um, so, but what happens is, you know what it is, sabotage. Sometimes in your own group, that's what happens. Mm -hmm. They sabotage your work, but he was the first person. He always had that connection to Africa. So the strongest connection is Marcus Garvey to in the diaspora. And uh, yeah. if I may ask, what was uh, Marcus Garvey, what was his role in the government? Did he, he have any political no, role no, no, no. or he, something? No, no, His he, he, he was the head leader of the, what we call pan africanist group. And he was the only leader, and I get it from other leaders I listen to, they, they talk about this. He was the only leader to, and that's the thing I try to bring in my groups. Because I know when I'm but promoting yeah, I, an agenda, yeah. I must have the resources. I must have a backup somewhere. No, no. You gotta understand How organizations. Did you you understand? That's why I told you the, yeah. the way Marcus Garvey, Malcolm X, these guys came up. We don't have those organizations anymore, mm -hmm. where you can actually build your own platform like he did. Well, you call it a platform, but it was a big pan africanist group yeah. where you have real investors. The things we're doing right now, do we have real investors coming with us to see? No, it's the yeah. same thing. Mm -hmm. People believe in his vision. You will have real investors where they can, you can actually do what you do. He didn't have to work uh, government. He had his own organization that brought many religions. You could be Islam, you could be uh, Judea, uh, believe in Judaism, I could be uh, Christian. But guess what? We're Pan-African, uh, we Pan-Africanist uh, Pan people, because Pan-Africanism uh, Pan -Africanism is a religion. You understand? It is a religion. True. It represents all religions, meaning like you, you can have a Muslim under Pan-Africanist, you can mm -hmm. have a, uh, Islam. Damn, that's, it has that's to do deep. With religion. That's Pan deep. You need to, to like no, the no, video. Pan Africanism means what I wake up, where I came out my mother. My mother's from, I keep telling you, my mother's from the village. My mm -hmm. father's from the village. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So my first religion is Africa. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? That's what Pan African is. Now, first after religion you're born, is Africa. This guy is a Pan African. No, but after can, you're born, then you can pick whatever religion you want to. You want to be uh, Christian, you want to be Muslim, whatever. That's cool. Yeah. But when you first come out of this world, your first religion is mm -hmm. what, you breathe, what, what you breathe from your mother and father. So Pan-Africanism, uh, Pan that's what it's about. So you can Maybe. have every religion in it. But mm -hmm. I, I struggle with telling people that. They always say Pan-Africanism uh, Pan is not a religion. Mm -hmm. But guess what? You will see no work. The work that we do is Pan-Africanist. Mm -hmm. It's not religious. I mean, it's not Christianity. Yeah. It's not Muslim. No. Because we guess just what? out here we out talking there, about Africa and promoting Africa. When we out in the streets, do you see yeah. them groups? You don't see them. No. But you see Pan-Africanists. Mm -hmm. Yes. So uh, Pan-Africanism is, um, is a religion. And that's who Marcus Garvey is. So, trust so me. do you believe anyone born in Africa, or raised in Africa, is a Pan-African? You should be, yeah. I mean, but it, it's all about if you, uh, we have a thing called tribalism in Africa too, the diaspora. You see the things going on, uh, even the disconnect between American, we're going to call them American Africans. I don't call them African Americans, mm -hmm. I call them American Africans. Mm -hmm. uh, the ones who were born over there. Because they're who, Africans in America. They're Africans, but they're not like me. So you understand, you, you guys are say, oh, I'm, I'm American, right? But mm -hmm. I'm, I'm African. My mother, father, African. my mother and my father are not from America. They're African. But me growing up in America, have, uh, have my life, whatever, um, I have an African name. So mm -hmm. when I went to school, I didn't have a name, Christopher yeah. or Joshua. Mm -hmm. I got a pure North African, African name. West African name in America. So I represent Africa since I was born. Nobody can tell me I was, trust me. When I walked in the American classroom, they didn't say he was American. They I said, like that. Who the hell was this African kid in yeah. my public school? Now, I made Africa look cool. Trust me, me and my cousins, me and that group generation, mm -hmm. it's a whole generation that represents Africa across the world, y'all need to know about. In Australia, you see the kids from Sudan, yeah. who's almost beat, yeah. you would say, yeah, a lot of them kids grew up in Australia, Australia. represent their country. So it's a lot of Africans, and they're pure African to the core. You saw them guys. Mm -hmm. You don't know if they grew up here or they grew up in uh, Australia, but that's what's, um, it doesn't matter where you are, if you're African, you should be paying Africans. Yeah. But um, in Europe, they they have a thing called EU, right? Because they don't give a damn, they Serbian or the, from UK, they're still white. So, we, you know, we need to get on that type of board. Mm -hmm. It's up to you guys mm -hmm. on the continent and on, across the board to um, see if y'all represent each other. Mm -hmm. I always say wherever I go, I always blend in. If, if I'm in uh, Jamaica, Liberia, America, you know I'm from somewhere, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so mm -hmm. I'm gonna represent you wherever I go. Amazing. Yeah. I, I, I want you to correct me, yeah. cause the mentality I've been having yeah. out here 
is far much different from his, his thoughts, mm -hmm. his points. Yeah, but you know, we are all theorists, and the theory depends with how much you pre or how better you prove your theory out there. So for me, I've been thinking a Pan African is that one person who goes their way, out of their way to do something special for Africa or something with uh, who holds Africa close to their heart. But according to what uh, Shabi is trying to prove to us is that anyone born in Africa should be a Pan-African. No, if, you if you are born in Africa, be ready to fight for Africa. Mm -hmm. If you are born in Africa, wh wh whether you go to America, Australia or the Europe, you need uh, to be, be, an yeah, be an African. Mm -hmm. Let everyone know that you are an African. But they don't like it when... Uh, Someone told me that um, they moved to the U.S. Then you meet someone, you know, they are from a village in the U.S. And guess what? You try talking Swahili to them. They, 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 don't, they don't respond back. And if they respond, they respond in English and they never want to entertain a conversation with you. What yeah. does that tell you? They're not proud Africans. Mm -hmm. Be more, an African. They're more Americans than... Yeah, you are more an, an American than an African. Mm -hmm. Be proud of yourself. Even where the country where you are, probably you are not 100% accepted. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Accept yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Be Love proud Africa. of yourself. This is Africa. That is, that is what I said. Africa. That is what I've said about the African man, the African woman. Mm -hmm. Love yourself. Embrace the African in you, yeah. Um, and don't be afraid to stand for yourself or rather to stand for Africa because mm -hmm. we've been put in a place where we cannot fight for ourselves, we have no right to do what because we are just black people or rather we are Africans. It's time to change that. It's time you became a hundred percent African. It's time you started fighting for Africa a hundred percent. Not just one leg in Africa and the other one is out there. No, just have them both even though you're living in abroad or, or Amazing. whatever. So just be African and you will come to see how good it feels just to love yourself. If they're going out there to make the money. African in you. Yeah, if they're going out there to make money, just let, go let, make let money. them make money. Yeah. A lot of it. Come they here. Bring invest. it to Africa. Yeah. Let's invest here. Grow with Africa. You know? Wow. Yeah. I love that. Grow with Africa. Don't yeah? just go there to just grow with other countries. The topic was about Jamaica. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've been having several following from. Uh, I've been following from the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. And these people are so much proud Please about Africa. They, they're the ones who have never been to Africa. Yeah. They love but Africa. They love Africa. We have someone Which, who was born in Africa. Uh, they, they were raised in Africa, Africa, but they hate Africa. Please wow. make it make sense. <laughs> make it make sense. Let them go read some history. We should actually have them come visit to see. We also have the beach or other beaches. Mm -hmm. We have... Um, Everything that's needed Everything. to be, yeah, the game, know? be yeah. The good beach, game parks. Uh -huh. There's someone, yeah. there's a good black person climate, who actually told peace. me, yeah, um, they didn't think we had an airport. <laughs> an airport, where, where, where did you think the planes were landing? <laughs> where did you think they land? <laughs> we, we are just like any other country, yeah, just that we are taken to be, you know. <laughs> down there but yeah. come and see come to Africa visit any country in Africa come to Kenya Utapenda you will well, love it well, let's get on some gossip it was recently a, uh, and it's a guy I follow you know I don't want to say his name but he's a big time YouTuber and I'm kind of hurt uh, I ain't gonna say your name bro I listen to your YouTube a lot you know I've been following you for a long time but he said some ignorant stuff about the uh, basketball team saying because they almost beat the USA team he said they didn't have any shoes in their country like that he said people don't have play, they don't have basketball rooms, they play on grounds like this. It's just ignorance that you show, uh, that's still around the world, that we need to educate our people. And it's things I told you I grew up with. Still to this day, people ask me, um, what is in Africa? I told you I work in an industry that travels all around the world, I want to tell you it. But the people who I work with still don't know what the hell I'm doing in Africa. They still don't know. They, they don't know understand. Yeah, yeah. 
When they know I'm about to go to Africa, they still ask me, why the hell you Why are you going to Africa? Because yeah, yeah. they don't know the beauty in Africa. They don't even know the aesthetics. They don't know. I keep telling you that. Uh, and enjoy the people this who ask time. you that are literally Africans, right? Africans. Most of I mean, them are Africans. Africans. Yeah. Even though they were I mean, born what? there and raised there, yeah. they're 100% African. Africans. They just don't know whether they came from Congo yeah, and, like or said, Tanzania or Kenya or whatever. But they're Or Africans. Burundi. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I get... I'm not even going to talk about the cultures who are not African who ask me those questions. Okay, maybe I got to educate them. And that's crazy too, because uh, they should know. But the Africans, yeah. If she, if she asks a regular, we're going to call them American Africans, and I hope they knew what Burundi is myself, you know. I, just because I know Burundi because I spend time in East Africa. But the typical African, even in Liberia, won't know even Burundi. Especially uh, uh, once you go to Americas and Europe. Luckily, I spend a lot of time back and forth on the continent. Once you go to these countries, you, uh, I got family members who left the continent and they have been back in about 30 years. You know what I'm saying? Still speak the language, still have their colloquial, still have their accent, but haven't touched the continent in about 30 years. Mm -hmm. And some of their kids haven't touched the continent. I still got siblings who've never been here. I've been in, back and forth to the continent since I was 16, 17. I still got siblings who've never been to the continent. They're I've not, they're not the proud of who they are. No, 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 not proud. It's just they haven't had that experience. Oh. They rather had the experience of living, experiencing life over there, be at, you know, I had to have both because I told you I'm first generation. I was forced to come back, and it was cool. I, I, I love to come back. But, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, um, yeah, a lot of my siblings, I got still siblings who haven't made it here. And hopefully they will make it here, too. It's all about financing. Uh, you going to school. You may get a relationship over there. A lot of my people, they get in relationships in other countries. You get married to other cultures. And, you know, some of your cultures don't want to go back and forth to the continent. You know, going to Africa is a big thing. For me, I make it look easy. I can go, I can leave America and be here for months and I don't feel homesick. You think a lot of my friends can be here long as we stay here? I don't think they can. They can. No. They can. They'd be, be, a typical three week trip is really a Mazungu trip. <laughs> <laughs> Black people trips to Africa is like two days. Black people going to Africa like a day. I know a friend who went to Mozambique recently for, for 24 hours. They flew all the way from America with their boyfriend, with her boyfriend, and they stopped in, I think, Tanzania or something like that, and they ended up in Mozambique. And they just stayed for like a, a, a day or two. And I got friends uh, in Mozambique. And they, and they can stay Mozambique more than weeks. a week, I guess. Yeah, you can't go to Africa with day people. Come to Africa, I stay for weeks, bro. Mm -hmm. Weeks to months. Mm -hmm. At least two weeks. At least 10 days. We're going to say 10 days. At least 10 yeah, days. Yeah, 10 days in Africa if you want to take trips. But um, yeah, it's a, you can't tell a lot of people to say, let's go to Africa for three months. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's, that's big. I was watching a, I was watching a video about some uh, lady living in the UK. Mm -hmm. A black lady. Mm -hmm. Then she did a video on a TikTok rubbishing uh, Africa. She was like, when I alighted at JKIA, the airport in Kenya, it was smelly. It was. Uh, why would she lie? <laughs> but she was saying mm -hmm. it's her second time. Uh, I, I think it's her second time after ten, she was here uh, ten years ago. Mm -hmm. And the same experience she got back then, the same experience. So she currently trending. People are attacking her left, right. Mm -hmm. Kenyans. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's talking negative about their country. So I never liked this. But That's why today we're here to talk about Africa, mm -hmm. Jamaica and Africa. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We talk about Jamaica and Africa. Uh, literally, the topic was about the world and Africa. But you know, the aesthetics of Jamaica is very, it's going to look just like you're here. You're yeah. in Jamaica. It's going to look it's like you're true. in Africa. Mm -hmm. Pretty much, if you've been to Mombasa, the coast, all those Dianis, it, it's gonna be Jamaica. Yeah, but it's the, the same. It's gonna be very Jamaica. Yeah, Montego Bay and Diani. Mm -hmm. Montego it's, Bay, I got Rastas there who know me. You know, Rasta firing group. We should be getting up soon. It's very, it's very. I'm telling you, as soon as you get there, you are gonna feel like like you're back in Africa. Wow. Now, I have to tell Jamaicans in New York the same thing because it's Jamaica. It's, 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 it's a big culture with Jamaican New Yorks and Jamaicans on the uh, on the island. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I told you. We can go to America and we switch up. Myself, I may try to flex and be on my thing, but Jamaicans, we all do this. Every culture, you get to these other countries, and you forget about your traditions. You mm -hmm. get how things look. Trust me, it just feels like this in Jamaica. Kids are playing soccer. Kids are running through the fields, running through the waterfalls, just like what's oh. going on. Mm -hmm. But when we get to America, you know, we get attached to these uh, certain lifestyles, and we forget how it was. America is different. Everyone must stay in their houses. Uh, well. Everybody's a flexor. Everyone's flexing. Everybody's flexing. Everybody in America know what I'm talking about. 
it's not a, it, it, it could be I could be living a horrible life but I have to come outside and put on a show and when I say show oh. me I can't be looking like I'm in poverty oh. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah, saying yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't be looking like <laughs> if you in America I'm sorry I'm, if I'm, I'm doing some business people but I can't uh, be looking like I'm in poverty uh, yeah so it's a place where I told you we had a video in the Kibera you gotta watch it Leo said a real thing. He said you have to pay for your freedom. And I said it's a real thing because a lot of these countries, we pay for poverty. And people don't understand what I mean for that. Because uh, in these countries, um, the money you think that it's enough, that's over here to live a comfortable life, that's still a small percentage in these other countries to live in these big Indias and these U.S., Canadas. Mm -hmm. Trust me, um, if I throw out a number, you're going to say, oh, that's a great number to live in Nairobi, of course. Mm -hmm. But then in America, that's probably the lowest part of uh, the house to live in. Or you probably can't even get an apartment mm -hmm. nowadays for that type of number. Where people live in uh, Karen, it's literally maybe a shoebox in America. Wow. Be honest. People in America know what's up. Is this called inflation? When you inflate certain countries, you got to so, find a way to survive. So some people adapted to it. If a person like me who travel around the world, I see different uh, countries, I see different economies. Uh, I try to uh, learn different um, political sciences. That's what, you know, our business, what we do, we try to learn um, economy first before we start paying people. What's, what's the rates yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, if people like me who don't travel the world and I just knew America, I would think this is how it's supposed to be. Then you start going to other places in South America, I spend time in South America, and you see like, oh, even Africa, of course, I can live a different way. Then you you go back to America. You don't want to. You you got want to give up all my money to America now. Like no, <laughs> I see, you see other life. But people who don't get to see other life, they just think, well, we're supposed to spend this million dollars for this. Oh, a million dollars supposed to be coming out my taxes. It's America. Cause we just got so comfortable with money coming out of pocket. Where the money coming out of pocket, we should be running the streets just like the people downtown. Yeah, yeah. yeah right now, t tell them right now. Right now, CBD, it's on fire. Everybody's running town. Yeah. In America, we should be like this, but we're so comfortable with my check come out, and $800 come on my, or, 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 or 1000 come on my check. <laughs> I'm like, well, yes. no, I, so should long be, as I should be running down the street, but I'm defeated. They only care about their personal space. Well, no, no, we're defeated. We're defeated culture. When I mean defeated, people don't know what I'm talking about. We were from a generation, in America, as a generation where inspired the all the revolutions, even in Africa, to uh, the Haitian Revolution, because uh, uh, Nat Turner, a lot of these guys, the fight, uh, struggle comes from and we gotta give it up to it uh, a lot of our african-american ancestors yeah so uh the generation who was in the street who didn't take all these taxes coming out of check in america or europe whatever they would have been in the streets mm -hmm. way before you see the kids even gen z but now in america people so relaxed with all this money it's just natural for yo they just took two thousand dollars your money oh if they took that out of Gen Z money, bro, in Kenya, <laughs> you think that was it? You crazy. That's what I say. It shows you. They, they, Kenya's they a whole claim it back. This is a new generation from maybe like my father's generation. Your generation you've seen Gen Z is literally an older generation, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. politically wise. We're, we're, in America, it's a little further. they like the kids' kids of the kids you see running the streets. That oh, energy yeah. you see of the kids? Yeah. Yeah, they're very early in the, you know, uh, uh, what you call it, Joma mm -hmm. They're very close to that generation. So they have that energy to run the streets and still feel that I need to approach it. I need to, you know what I'm saying? The young generation. Oh, yeah. We don't have a lot of young Gen Zs like that in certain around the world who's going to run the streets like that. You know what I'm saying? That generation is dead in certain countries. This is one of the generations where this is a young generation closer to, uh, you know, a generation of Joma Kenyatta. So, what do you mean with that? The generation is dead. You, you understand it? Uh, yeah. the when I say you dead, mean, I don't mean uh, that. I they are not empowered or something? Yeah, politically wise. Oh, politically wise. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You understand? Yeah, I understand. Yeah, we can, it was a generation before us, even me. 20 years before me, it was guys you can name 10, 10 15 guys. They had their own organization. Other yeah, than even Marcus Garvey. Yeah. It was a lineage wow. of guys I can give you. I don't want to go through right now. Yeah. But that's how it used to be. You didn't have, it was very organic because they came from a, a loin. What we call it, loin? Meaning it's like, I told you uh, the things I do because I was taught under the, the Garvey people. It's called, it's called loin. You don't gotta be born from people. It's what you learn from exactly who I told you, Kwame Nkrumah learned from W. Du Bois. Yeah, he came from his loin. So all the people you learn from, we lost that type of lineage, meaning like it was a certain time when um, you had those loins and after they either they get killed, they pass away, stuff like that. The knowledge, people, the knowledge is lost. So shit, that knowledge of, you see those kids in the street, they were taught by a certain generation of you know, mm -hmm. who knew about running the streets, know about, I don't want to name the stuff, you know, we talk about off camera, 
but they know about freedom fighters, pretty much. You know what I'm saying? They know about the history of these streets. Mm -hmm. Now, certain countries, they don't know about the generation of people who used to run in these streets, who stayed on these lands, who did this, who did that. Yeah, so that generation is lost when I talk about it. Yeah. Wow. Of that next loin. We only got a few that I know I can tell you, and they're, they're a little bit older. That uh, that uh, Those loins used to start at 21, 18, 19, new, them freedom fighters. They didn't start right. at 23, 24. I, I feel uh, the reason as to why a generation would get lost yeah. uh, is because of the fear. What the, the fear they have uh, let me, on their government. Well, so the, you, 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 you're being a coward. If the government, if, if you do this against the government, the government might might come for you, might attack you. I mean that too, but we, I think we can, we, everybody, each country, from Kenya to US to Liberia, we got comfortable with, with society. You know what I'm saying? Myself, even included. If you get hypnotized, we work every day, we get used to how we live, we just think, uh, we, we, way circumstances is, it's supposed, how it's supposed to be. But um, you start reading up history books and stuff like that, there's no difference between those three fathers of, of those errors. Mm -hmm. No difference. It's just we just comfortable uh, with things happening. And not saying we're going to go out there and we're going to ride like this, and those people don't have to come up there and beat us with batons and stuff like that. It's systematically. And then we got to actually know the systems to know what's going on. A lot of us don't read up the systems. Even not, I'm not saying I'm well-versed, but that's the problem. We all don't educate on what's going on. The way we can be like, oh, this is very similar to when my grandfather was out here, you know, or my uncles was out here. We just think that this is how it's supposed to be. We think we're in a new day. We have cars now. We have technology. You know, we're a little bit more relaxed. That's what it is, though. But, you know, it's comfortability. I always say comfortability. You know, that's I mean, why I say amazing, yeah. amazing. Yeah, you know, it, it's unleashing some wisdom. So, and an, anytime a wise man is talking, you just sit and relax and uh, don't talk a lot. You just listen. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's it. that's what it is though. We have I think technology has changed uh, um, our energy on, on freedom uh, where we are in the world. Cause you can be in the, in the most slums, but as long as you got good phone and Wi-Fi, uh, you think that's how your life's supposed to be. And I, I don't agree with that. You know, cause trust me, I, I always say we live in Africa, and why are we the poorest nation uh, continent? Mm -hmm. You tell me. Yeah, answer that question. Why are we the poorest continent, but we have the most riches in the world? Africa. Africa. Yeah. When I say poor, meaning in economy-wise, like we have, have we capita, have both the resources per capita, meaning like the resources doesn't trickle down to our yeah. pocket. We have the you resources, but we have to export our raw materials to other continents for them to go manufacture, mm -hmm. then sell to our, back to our, the finished product at a very high cost. Yeah. Which is a very dumb thing. Exactly. Very dumb. Let me ask whether. You guys can never think of being politicians because uh, nah, the topic nah, we just talking about it's somehow relatable to politics. Yeah, I mean, politics is a game. You got to be in a certain circle. It's not about uh, uh, your qualifications. It's who you know. Mm -hmm. And it's a game, like I said, it's a whole network of people you got to get into. It's a network. You can't just get, just get in and say, I want to change policies. You got to know people. It's a no people, no pain. You got to play a game. Wow. Even, like, you got to be a certain line, a certain policy, certain people. Well, yeah, I was gonna say Pan Africans was never really politicians. And I ain't gonna sound like the biggest camp. It's just a group I, um, I'm part of because I'm born from Liberians with Pan Africans. But we don't got nothing to do with trying to be in. Um, if you want to be in politics, it's cool. I ain't got time to be in politics. A lot of us, we don't deal with politics. We, we deal, we've got our own organizations and we deal what we have to deal with. But you know, politicians, uh, politics is not really gonna change everything that you need to do. It's literally gonna be the ground of people. Mm -hmm. People who's gonna make the decisions yeah. of what the country's gonna be. Yeah. yeah. By owning yeah. organization, it, mean, it simply means uh, being able to change the society or um, create change. Your own think tanks, people. Without being in government. Yeah, think tanks is what make the even in governments. Governments have think tanks. Those are important people, enlightened people, who who go to the politicians and say, "I have ideas. I have money. I got equity. You listen to me." Yeah, it's people like that. But I'm just saying. We, in our own in, uh, neighborhoods, we have to have think tanks, not just politics. Uh, politicians going to them and saying, change this. Have important people like Mr. Obama. Oh, Mr. Well, Clue, not in politics, Clue, but they make decisions. People who got influence in the neighborhood. Wow. You know, those are guys who really change uh, countries. And mm. then you bring it, but those guys you bring to the politicians, mm. of course. But you can tell the politicians, we already hooked up with Mr. Obama. We already yeah. hooked up Big with up with Obama, Trump. Peter Musioka. Yeah. Exactly. But guess yeah. what? He showed his, his influence. He, all the politicians who was there, 
it was him who took care of the whole event, right? Yeah, That's sure, what I told you, Think sure. Tank. And you saw the kind of respect he's yeah, receiving from the society. Yeah, it's not about money. Think Tanks are people who um, who can change. Uh, those are networkers, those are financiers, you know? Yeah. Those are people, influencers, people who you need. Behind your campaigns, the people you need. And those are the people, True. that's the people, uh, type of groups we need to build. Every community outside a lot of, a lot of us have those. Mm -hmm. Those people like that. Who, it could be four or five people. Yeah. And they can invest in many organizations. Wow. Yeah. Keep on commenting. Yeah. Yeah. We, we want to see your reaction. Let's engage on this. And uh, I want your genuine opinion about uh, whatever you just said. Yeah. Words from, words from a wise man. <laughs> you never correct a wise man. So uh, once they have the uh, the wisdom, yeah, out there, you just need to think. Hmm? You decide whether to go with it or you you avoid it, but you you never question it. But leave a comment this time around. Leave a comment there. You wanna be a politician? No. <laughs> politics, politics is a dirty game. You don't do both politics. Mm -mm. Yeah. Yeah, it's not it's not my cup of tea. Wow. Even you as a, as a as a as a as an individual dealing with a politician is difficult. Now imagine you becoming the politician. Yeah. Your life will be hectic. Sure. Mm -hmm. Not I, unless you're an influencer in a good way mm -hmm. um, to a point where everyone in the society, including the politicians, mm -hmm. they, have to con you. they have to consult you uh, to do they something. they respect you. That's different. But playing the game of politics is, is, is a no-go zone. You being powerful in that society, you're not in politics direct, but you are powerful. Yeah, you're powerful. Everyone... Uh, you can decide on who to lead the society or not. That's a good one. That's better That's than better. being in politics. Mm -hmm. By still the society, mm. you might bring in uh, some leader whom the society doesn't want. No, it's, a, it's actually... Okay, it's, it's not that you're the one who's making decisions. It's more of people actually want to listen to what you think about the situations that are going on. You know, or rather the situations they are in mm -hmm. that way. So, for example, like your friend Peter, mm -hmm. when he just walks into a room, mm -hmm. everyone respects the guy. Yeah, sure. But is he in politics? Like, is he no, no. in deep in politics? No. That's the thing. He only gets consulted by politicians. Exactly, that's the <laughs> point. Yeah, that way. That is much better than being in politics. Wow, mm -hmm. these guys are discouraging me. I have some mindset of becoming a politician, <laughs> but we're going to think about it. <laughs> you gotta stay. No, you can, you can, you can actually be a politician. You gotta Just stay independent. Yeah. Get yeah. into yeah. the dirty game, of which yeah. I don't think it's it's possible. It's possible. Is it? Uh, to be in the game of politics, politics. and not be. In the dirty game. I, I won't be in the dirty game. I will, I will actually start to I'll, 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 be, I'll be there to change, to you, change but, but this is another thing about think. politics. You're not going to change everything. You got to stick, you got to choose one big thing that you want to change yeah. or you're behind yeah. and stick with it your whole time. Yeah. You got to be a part of that. If, you, if you're about crime, you got to be about, you're about crime. If you're about agriculture, you're big on agriculture, your whole thing is about agriculture or justice reform, health reform. You're not going to, don't try to act like you're broke. You oh, I, I, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. You mm. may be able to change one thing. You choose <laughs> one and stick with it. Yeah, or you may not even be able to change it. But um, what they do is they say, you know what, I can't change everything. Let me just stick on one big platform that I know I can work on, that I'm more versed on to talk about. Um, and they may be already changing or working in that field. But yeah, that's what you do in policy. You don't try to say, I'm a superman. I'm going to change everything. No, no, no. You stick with one platform and then you grow from that. Uh, you, you know. So you guys approve my. I, I just do. A, uh, I, 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 I choose. I choose one. Then I. I push it. You so stay like, in the you start, they, they, they have approved my my. Yeah, if you start my quest to be a politician. They will start also. You know, watching you. Some fishy. Oh, watching, oh, watching you me. And now start blackmailing you, and I'll start making you get into the crime of politics. So. Go see Africa and the love I have for Africa. I'm always out here showcasing Africa, mm -hmm. the best and the, do you say the best and the bad? 
we showcase Africa and so far I haven't seen something bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't think about. whether the heart of doing good good can never go out, get out of me. <laughs> do, do, do you say so? The heart of doing good yeah, can never can never go away. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I will always be yeah, doing, doing good. But for today, you guys uh I hope you enjoyed our conversation. The video is becoming a bit longer and I don't want to go more than 40 minutes. So leave your comment like the video and uh kindly don't forget to subscribe my name is gossy africa yeah i was with the the flying queen flying queen the black geo shabby like and subscribe please. yeah like and subscribe the black geo